Hello everybody, DM Gashbad here. We are bringing you another battle report from the Warhammer Fantasy 6th edition skirmish booklet. Now we've previously run through both of the solo missions that were in that booklet, so now we're moving on to missions that are not specifically meant for solo play, but I've chosen one that is so simple that I think it can adapt itself really easily. It is the Slayer scenario, and in this it's real straightforward. There's a giant and there are six dwarf troll slayers, and they are going to fight. This battle reminds me a lot of a friend that I used to have way back in the day when we were all playing Warhammer Fantasy. He didn't really have the patience to paint an army or to study the rules or even for a full game, but he loved the idea of Warhammer Fantasy and he just really liked small battles. He would just occasionally shout at somebody, Hey! Five skinks versus five goblins, let's go! And these tiny five minute battles were exactly the kinds of things that he enjoyed and this reminds me a lot of that. This is also one of those battles that's probably good as an introductory scenario for Warhammer Fantasy. You get to cut out a lot of the more complicated rules. For the last Warhammer skirmish, the Egg Hunt one, I was surprised at the number of special rules that I had to keep track of. But since all the Slayers are immune to psychology, and the other side only has one model, the Giant, then none of those rules are going to come into play. There's not even route tests in this battle. It's just one side is going to die and one side is going to win. Or if you're the dwarfs, maybe you win even if you die because they are slayers. They have disgraced themselves and they're trying to find glorious death in battle. Anyway, here is my band of six dwarf slayers who have tracked down this giant in its mountainous lair. And here is the giant himself, Mr. Rourke. And here is the battlefield. We're going to fight this on a two foot by two foot board. I've marked out that area in blue tape. I also scattered a lot of terrain around the edges because that's what the scenario suggests. It's not going to come into play at any point. I thought maybe it would look nice. Honestly, I also put it all in the corners thinking there's no way that it's going to matter way out there. I'm not totally correct about that. The giant gets set up in the very center of the table. You can see him there. And then all of the dwarf slayers are randomly scattered around from that guy. So you roll a scatter die in 2d6, and that's how far from the giant they each set up. And I did have some situations where a dwarf slayer would land on a bit of terrain. This was more of an inconvenience than anything else, so I just moved the terrain out of the way to make room for the slayer. Since it's just myself playing the scenario right now, I am going to take the side of the giant because I think he has slightly more tactical options. He has more choices as to how he moves and what he does in the course of the game. For the slayers, these horrible stunty invaders in my rightful property, I'm going to have each of them just move towards the giant as fast as they can. Every round in combat, they're going to use their two slayer axes instead of their great weapon because it's, it's just better. And we'll see who wins. So you can see most of the slayers have ended up on the left-hand side of the board. There's one sort of off between the mine and the skull in the top right, and there's one kind of hanging out by that tree stump over in the bottom right. The giant gets the first turn, and this is the first tactical choice that I have to make. The giant doesn't have his normal attack routine. He has a special chart that he rolls on in hand-to-hand -hand combat. About half of those attacks involve him striking multiple opponents and they have to be kind of close to him in order to do this. One is picking up a guy and throwing him at another dwarf and the other is just swinging his club around and hitting a couple guys. So my choice was do I pick on one dwarf and possibly lose the benefit of some of these random attacks I might have or do I thunder straight into a group of dwarves and risk multiple dwarf counterattacks? I decide that I'm gonna pick off stragglers. While the giant is cool, he's got six wounds, his attacks are really destructive, I think that the Slayers can really dump out a lot of damage really quickly if given the opportunity. So I'm going to try and thin the ranks and see what I can do. So I charge off onto the top right to that one Slayer that's kind of skulking around between the skull and the mine. The Giant has a movement of six. He's got no problem charging in. There's no terror test or anything like that for the Dwarf Slayer because he's immune to psychology. We go straight on to the hand-to-hand -hand combat phase, and in 6th edition, the charging player gets to strike first. Not that it really matters, the giant would strike first because it has initiative of 3 versus the dwarf's initiative of 2. Anyway, Mr. Rourke goes first, and I roll a 6, which is stuff into pants. So this poor unfortunate dwarf, just right off the bat, he gets snatched up off the ground and just dropped into this guy's gold trousers, and he counts as a casualty. He is just going to be saved to be eaten for later. So that is one dwarf slayer down really fast. I'm not looking at any return attacks this first round. Yeah, it was good. So now it is the dwarf turn one, and according to my dwarf AI that I made up, all of the dwarf slayers are just going to surge towards the giant as fast as they can. And so here you have that group there. They're going to get into combat pretty soon. 
It is round two and over to the giant turn again. And so I'm going to continue on with the strategy because it's been working so far. I'm going to charge the next closest dwarf, also the dwarf that's furthest from the rest of the guys. So I'm gonna try and pick on him before his friends come to help him out. We go on to the hand-to-hand -hand combat phase and I roll thump with club. This is a brutal one. So one model in base-to-base -base contact, so that one guy there, is hit at strength seven and I get to add plus three to the injury roll if I wound. So this attack is really likely to take somebody out and sure enough I roll that two plus in order to wound this dwarf slayer and then I roll enough, basically anything but a one, to take him out of action. So yeah, this, this charge is actually really brutal, possibly more so in some ways than the regular 6th edition giant book because there's no initiative test and if you get picked up you don't get a free attack or anything like that. Anyway, this Mr. Rourke just smashes his club straight down on this dwarf's orange head and he is gone as well. Completely undaunted, of course, the Dwarf Slayers charge on. So this is their round two, and it looks like they're in a great position, but when I go to measure it out, those guys are just a hair out of charge range of that giant. Well, except for the one closest to him, he actually manages to charge in, but charging in alone against a giant is not really what you want to do. Anyway, the other three on the left are just a bit out. Even worse, they can't march towards the giant. This is the old edition, the dwarfs don't have the relentless rules, so they can't march even with if they're within 8 inches of an enemy. So yeah, all they can do is a cautious jog towards Mr. Rourke while their friend tries to fend him off. The good news is, is that because he charged the dwarf slayer now gets to attack first. Maybe soften him up for his friends before he inevitably gets squished. The bad news is, is that he only hits once, these dwarfs will hit on a 3+. And because of their Slayer skill, they always wound on a 4+. Unfortunately, he fails to wound, so he does no damage. In return, Mr. Rourke rolls the Thump with Club result again. So that's one Strength 7 attack coming in, which wounds, one Injury roll at plus 3, which takes this Dwarf out of action as well. So now half the Dwarf Slayers are dead, and it's the Giant's turn again. It's not going well for the Dwarfs. So now Mr. Rourke is feeling really confident. None of this picking off people at the edges. He's going to go straight into the remaining Dwarfs right in the middle. Charging into the center dwarf, we're going to see if we can get some of these multi-attacks to go off. Sure enough, we roll the swing with club result. So D3 models within 4 inches take a strength 5 hit. I get 2 hits, so I choose the dwarf that I'm fighting in hand-to-hand -hand combat, as well as the dwarf that is just over on the right. I manage to wound with both. The dwarf in base-to-base -base contact is only knocked down, so he'll get up in the next round. But the one off to the right I take out of action. It's a bad day to be a slayer. But it is the dwarf turn again and the last slayer manages to charge into combat. Who knows, these guys could do some damage. The remaining dwarf stands up after being bonked around a little bit. So we go straight to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. The charging dwarf goes and, again, only hits once and fails to wound. In 6th edition, dwarfs have hate greenskins, and it's specifically just greenskins. Snotlings, goblins, orcs, black orcs, that kind of thing. Giants don't count, so they don't get to reroll their to hit rolls. In return, Mr. Rourke rolls the swings with club result again. He rolls his d3, he gets three, but there's only two guys there, so each of them get a strength five hit. The one who just attacked, he gets wounded and stunned. The other dwarf slayer goes unhurt, so he gets to actually strike back after picking himself off the ground, because when you do that, you strike last. Anyway, this troll slayer manages to do some damage. He hits twice, and he only wounds once, but it's a critical, so that hands two wounds to Mr. Rourke, giving the dwarf side a little bit of hope towards the end of this battle. But now we're on to a new round. It's the giant's turn, and we go to the hand-to-hand -hand combat phase, and the giant gets to go first because of that initiative of three. And he rolls a thump with club. That's the strength seven one. He can't attack the stunned dwarf because there is a dwarf on his feet that he can still attack, so that guy catches a club to the face, he gets wounded, but I roll a 1 on the injury roll, so with the plus 3 that only brings me up to a 4, which is a stunned result. So he actually lives through that. Still, both dwarfs face down fighting a giant, that's not exactly where you want to be from a strategic perspective. It's the dwarf turn, in the movement phase they both roll over to knocked down, so slightly better. But in the hand-to-hand -hand combat phase, he has all the time in the world. No one's attacking him this round. He rolls his attacks and he gets thump with club. So he just slowly brings the end of his club down onto the Slayer onto the right and just grinds him into the mountainside. And we're back to the Giant's turn. He rolls up a swing with club on this one. And so that's a strength 5 hit for the one remaining Slayer, but it doesn't wound. So this battle is actually going to go on. Maybe this Slayer won't win, but possibly he'll at least get to die on his feet. 
So it's the dwarf turn. The dwarf slayer stands up. He gets to strike at the end of this combat, which means that it's now the giant's turn. The giant rolls another swing with club, which isn't really that terrible. So that's a strength five hit to the dwarf, which manages to wound. However, the slayer is only knocked down after that attack. But that brings us around to the giant's turn again. The dwarf hasn't had a chance to get back up again, so he just gets this free roll on the attack chart, and he rolls another six. So he gets stuffed into the giant's pants as well. So we've got two dwarf snacks for later today. And that's a good meal by anyone's reckoning. So, ouch, that one was a little brutal. On the plus side, I actually managed to win one of these solo scenarios. On the other side, it was definitely the least close of any of them. The dwarfs just didn't really seem like they had a chance. They got squashed one after the other. But it was very, very fast. So what I did was I just reset the board really quick. I wasn't going to take pictures or anything. I was just going to see if I could do this a little bit differently to see if the dwarfs did have a chance. This time I controlled the dwarf side directly. The giant, I decided he was going to do much the same thing as before. He was going to go and attack the ones furthest away from any other dwarfs, kind of pick them off piecemeal. In that battle, it didn't go nearly as well for the giant. The one dwarf that he picked on, he just kind of threw him around a little bit, never actually managed to take him out of combat. Meanwhile, my other dwarfs, instead of having them just move forward as fast as they could, they actually just formed together in a little pack and ended up towards the end charging into the giant in this huge glob. So the four slayers charged in, they got their eight attacks, they hit with seven of them, they critted with three of them and got another wound on top of that and just toppled the giant in one glorious round of combat. So yeah, it's definitely possible for the dwarfs to win, but again, it was a really lopsided game. I'm not sure, well, definitely since there's few models and there's these big swings that can happen on the random attacks and everything, I'm not sure this is a scenario that's very likely to produce a very close result. But if you play this, I mean, it's quick, it's fast, and I have to admit, it's actually really fun seeing this giant kind of stomp around on these little guys to see well if they can chop away at his ankles fast enough. It, it is entertaining. But if you do play this, if you're the giant, try and pick on guys that are isolated. That seemed to work real well for them. And if you're playing the dwarfs, form up in a little pack. Don't just go in one at a time. Try and charge them in one big group. So that is all for now. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them below, and I will see you on the next one.